Welcome to the Cycle Computing video series. In this video, we'll demonstrate how to configure Cycle Cloud to run on a cloud service provider. We'll start with Cycle Cloud already installed and licensed, but not yet configured against any particular cloud service provider, and then we'll start a cluster with it. We support Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud Platform. Let's look at the steps necessary to get a cluster ready to run your workflow on AWS. To complete these steps, you will need an AWS account with access keys, an SSH key, a VPC, a subnet to launch your cluster into, and an S3 bucket. I'm starting with CycleCloud already installed on an instance in my VPC, but you can install it anywhere you like. First off, we'll need to create a new cloud service provider account in CycleCloud. To do so, click on the gear icon in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. For an Amazon Web Services account, CycleCloud prompts you for your default region, access key, and secret key, as well as a default S3 storage bucket. Google Cloud Platform uses an account JSON file, and Microsoft Azure can use either your published settings or a certificate file. For now, we'll just use Amazon Web Services. Once you've input your credentials into CycleCloud, you're ready to create a cluster. Let's create an open grid engine cluster to demonstrate how easy it is to get to where we started for our batch workflow demo. Select Clusters from the top, and then select Grid Engine. Now we can name our cluster. You can run as many clusters as you want through CycleCloud, allowing you to differentiate environments for different users or groups, enabling them and preventing them from tripping over one another on a shared resource. CycleCloud supports many different operating systems out of the box, and adding support for new images is quick and easy. A key CycleCloud feature is Cluster Init. Cluster Init allows you to quickly copy code data, or custom packages into your cluster nodes when they boot, and it's backed by an S3 bucket. You can use an S3 bucket to include custom chef recipes to further configure your execute environments, but right now we don't need to do anything that complicated. You can also configure which SSH key pair is used, and these settings will work. With node environments and access configured, we can start to tell CycleCloud what kind of nodes we want to use and how many cores to request from AWS at a time. We don't need many resources for a small scheduler, so we can leave that as it is. But all of AWS's instance types are available. More information about these instance types can be found at Amazon's website. I'll leave a link in the description. Autoscale is scheduler aware. As you submit jobs to your scheduler in the cloud, CycleCloud will detect how many cores are needed and request them from your cloud service provider. And once they complete their jobs, CycleCloud will terminate them again before the start of the next billing hour always maximizing the amount of compute available while minimizing cost. Initial cores tells CycleCloud how many execute nodes to request when you launch the cluster, and max cores tells CycleCloud how big you're willing to grow the cluster, allowing you to keep costs under control if you have a steady flow of jobs. Spot instances are sometimes interrupted and slower to start, but can represent dramatic savings. If an instance is interrupted, CycleCloud will automatically requeue your jobs for you. To see auto-scale in action, check out our batch workflow video. CycleCloud handles your cluster networking for you as well, allowing you to run in a virtual private cloud and apply your firewall rules. Both of these can be easily created from the AWS console. I've already got a VPC and a subnet ID, so I just enter them here. Hit save, and you're ready to launch your cluster. Check out our batch workflow video to see how easy it is to use your new cluster. And to experience it for yourself, visit CycleComputing.com for a demo cluster of your own.